A train slices through the middle of a residential building, not beside it, not under it, through it. Residents on the eighth floor eat dinner while thousands of passengers zip past their windows every single day. This isn't a scene from a dystopian movie. This is Chongqing, China, and it's just the beginning of what happens when a nation decides that impossible is just another word for not yet built. While most countries carefully avoid mountains, China drills through them. Where others see rivers as barriers, Chinese engineers see opportunities for the world's longest bridges. And right now, as you watch this, factories across the country are preparing to unleash something that sounds pulled straight from science fiction. Humanoid robots, mass-produced and affordable, ready to work alongside humans in ways we've only imagined. What you're about to see isn't just engineering, it's a complete reimagining of what's possible when ambition meets execution on a scale the world has never witnessed. From trains that practically fly at speeds over 450 kilometers per hour to structures that make the Eiffel Tower look tiny, China has spent the last two decades building the future while the rest of us were still debating the blueprints. Chongqing shouldn't exist, at least not in the way it does. Picture trying to build a modern metropolis on a landscape that's basically a vertical maze of mountains, valleys, and rivers. Most city planners would take one look and choose literally anywhere else. But Chongqing isn't most cities. The Lisaba Station monorail has become an internet sensation, and for good reason. Every few minutes, a train emerges from a tunnel, passes directly through floors 6 through 8 of a 19-story apartment building, and continues on its way. The sound inside those apartments? Barely noticeable. The whole thing was designed together from the start, with the building constructed around the transit line. Residents knew what they were signing up for, and the trade-off was simple. Inconvenience from occasional vibrations versus having a metro station literally in their building. But that's just one example of how Chongqing deals with its geography problem. The city sprawls across 82,000 square kilometers, roughly the size of Austria, but calling it flat would be like calling Mount Everest a hill. Buildings here have entrances on multiple floors because the streets exist at different elevations. What's the ground floor depends entirely on which side of the building you're approaching from. Highways stack on top of each other like layers of a cake, sometimes six or seven levels deep. Navigation apps regularly confuse drivers because the same intersection exists on three different vertical planes. The monorail system itself is an engineering marvel that most people overlook while focusing on the train through building spectacle. It's the world's longest and busiest monorail network, handling grades and curves that would be impossible. For traditional subway systems, the trains climb slopes that would make a San Francisco cable car nervous, all while maintaining schedules accurate to the minute. When your city is built on terrain this extreme, you don't just adapt, you innovate or you fail. Something shifted in 2025, and most people outside China haven't fully grasped what it means yet. Humanoid robots stopped being experimental lab projects and started becoming products you can actually buy. Not someday, now. Six Chinese companies announced plans to manufacture over a thousand humanoid robots this year alone. That might not sound revolutionary until you see what these machines can do and how much they cost. Unitree's G1 model retails for around $16,000, less than a decent used car and it can perform backflips, execute long jumps, and manipulate objects with surprising dexterity. Videos of these robots navigating obstacle courses and responding to voice commands have been circulating online, and they're not carefully edited demos. They're genuine capabilities, but here's where it gets really interesting. Walker S1 robots are already working in BYD and Zeker automotive factories, not as experiments but as actual production line workers. Over 500 orders have come in from automakers who see the writing on the wall. Humanoid robots can go anywhere humans can, work longer shifts without fatigue, and handle tasks too dangerous or repetitive for people to do efficiently. The Chinese government has set an ambitious target, become the world leader in humanoid robotics by 2027. Given the pace of development, that's not just propaganda, it's a realistic timeline. Companies are racing to solve the final challenges of natural movement, object recognition, and adaptive learning. Some industry insiders are speculating that within five to 10 years, these robots won't just follow commands. They'll recognize human emotions, respond with apparent empathy, and potentially serve as companions for elderly care or even romantic relationships. Whether that's exciting or deeply unsettling probably depends on your perspective. What's undeniable is that China is betting heavily on a future where humanoid robots are as common as smartphones, and they're building that future right now, while much of the world is still debating whether it's even possible. China's high-speed rail network is so massive that listing the numbers almost doesn't make sense. Try this. 
48,000 kilometers of track. That's roughly 70% of all the high-speed rail on planet Earth. The network connects 97% of Chinese cities with populations over half a million. Between 2021 and 2024 alone, they added 10,000 kilometers of new track. Most countries don't have 10,000 kilometers of any kind of rail, period. The CR450 prototype recently hit 453 kilometers per hour during testing. When it enters service, the journey from Beijing to Shanghai will take about two and a half hours. That's a distance comparable to New York to Chicago, covered in less time than most people's morning commute. The trains maintain punctuality that makes Swiss railways look sloppy. On long-distance routes, delays of more than 10 seconds are considered failures worth investigating. But speed is only part of the story. The Qinghai-Tibet Railway operates at 5,000 meters above sea level, where oxygen is so thin that the passenger cars are pressurized like airplanes. Additional oxygen is pumped into the cabins to prevent altitude sickness. The line crosses permafrost regions where the ground literally freezes and thaws with the seasons, requiring special engineering solutions to prevent the tracks from warping. It's not just a railway, it's a high-altitude life support system on rails. Critics have raised concerns about the financial sustainability of some routes and the environmental impact of construction through sensitive ecosystems. The Tibetan Railway in particular has faced scrutiny for potentially affecting the plateau's delicate environment and the displacement of local communities. Yet the network keeps expanding, connecting remote regions to the economic heartland in ways that were unthinkable just 20 years ago. The Hong kong zhuhai macau Bridge is 55 kilometers of combined bridges, tunnels, and artificial islands connecting three major cities across open ocean. It crosses one of the world's busiest shipping lanes in a region prone to typhoons and seismic activity. The underwater tunnel section alone required technology that didn't exist when the project started. Massive prefabricated tunnel sections were built on shore, floated into position, then carefully lowered and connected underwater with millimeter precision. Two artificial islands were constructed in the middle of the sea just to serve as entry and exit points for the tunnel. These aren't small platforms. They're equipped with logistics centers, emergency services, and observation areas, building islands from scratch in open water facing typhoon force winds and then connecting them to underwater tunnels is the kind of problem most engineers would politely decline to solve. But if you want to talk about height instead of length, the Bay Panjiang Bridge sits 565 meters above the river below. That's taller than two Eiffel Towers stacked on top of each other. Standing on that bridge and looking down feels less like being on a road and more like being in an airplane that's somehow attached to the ground. The bridge reduced travel time between Yunnan and Guizhou provinces from over four hours to about an hour, opening up a region that was economically isolated by its own geography. The Danyang Kunshan Grand Bridge holds the record for sheer length, 165 kilometers built in under four years by 10,000 workers. It's essentially a continuous viaduct that keeps trains level as they cross rivers, rice paddies, and lakes. Most countries would spend four years just on the environmental impact studies. China built the whole thing. The Shenzhen Zhongshan Link combines underwater tunnels with bridges and artificial islands across 49 kilometers of open water with fierce currents, variable tides, and massive maritime traffic. The engineering challenges were so complex that specialized floating cranes and vessels had to be designed just for this project. One artificial island serves as the tunnel entrance, allowing vehicles to descend gradually without steep ramps, maintaining high speeds throughout the crossing. The Three Gorges Dam generates enough electricity to power tens of millions of homes, about 2% of China's total energy consumption. Its reservoir stretches for hundreds of kilometers, fundamentally altering the Yangtze River's flow. The dam's ship locks function like a water staircase, raising and lowering vessels up to 3,000 tons between drastically different water levels. Watching a massive cargo ship get lifted 100 meters by controlled flooding is the kind of thing that makes you reconsider what's possible with water and engineering. But China isn't stopping there. The Shuangjiangku Dam, currently under construction, will become the world's tallest at 315 meters when completed. Meanwhile, the country is pursuing renewable energy with the same intensity it brought to high-speed rail. In just the first five months of 2025, China installed 198 gigawatts of solar capacity. For context, that's more than the entire United States added in all of 2024. Offshore wind farms feature turbines the size of skyscrapers, their blades sweeping areas larger than football fields. The South-North Water Transfer Project makes most other infrastructure projects look quaint by comparison. It's designed to move water 2,700 kilometers from the water-rich south to the parched north through three separate routes. Construction began in 2002 and isn't expected to finish until 2050. The project already supplies tens of millions of people in Beijing and Tianjin, 
but it's also controversial. Critics point to the massive environmental disruption, the displacement of hundreds of thousands of people, and concerns that the western route could affect water availability in neighboring countries that share rivers with China. The eastern and central routes are operational, moving billions of cubic meters of water annually through a combination of natural rivers, artificial canals, and tunnels carved through mountains. The western route, still in planning stages, would tap into rivers on the Tibetan Plateau, raising geopolitical tensions with downstream nations and environmental concerns about one of the world's most fragile ecosystems. Shanghai's skyline looks like it was designed by someone who thought traditional skyscrapers were boring. The Shanghai Tower spirals upward 632 meters, twisting as it rises to reduce wind resistance. Near the top, 270 vertical axis wind turbines generate about 10% of the building's electricity, turning the force trying to knock it down into power, keeping it running. The design isn't just aesthetic. In a region hit by typhoons, that spiral shape can mean the difference between standing and swaying dangerously. The Shanghai World Financial Center earned the nickname Bottle Opener for the trapezoid cutout near its top. That opening isn't decorative. It channels wind through the structure, dramatically reducing the pressure on the building during storms. Without it, the forces at that height would require significantly more structural reinforcement, making the building heavier and more expensive. The Oriental Pearl Tower, with its distinctive pink spheres stacked along a central column, has become as iconic to Shanghai as the Eiffel Tower is to Paris. Each sphere houses observation decks, restaurants, or museums, offering different perspectives on the city below. At night, programmable LED systems turn the entire structure into a light show visible for kilometers along the Huangpu River. Rafael City takes the concept of connected buildings to an extreme. Eight skyscrapers are linked by a massive horizontal bridge called the Crystal, creating the visual effect of a sailing ship floating between towers. The structure contains a glass-floored observation deck where visitors can watch the confluence of two rivers hundreds of meters below their feet. At night, synchronized LED displays cover the towers and the crystal, transforming the entire complex into an urban light sculpture. None of these physical mega-projects would function without an equally impressive digital infrastructure. China has deployed 4.39 million 5G base stations, representing about 60% of the global total. User penetration sits between 75-80%, meaning most Chinese urbanites are already operating on a network most Western countries won't fully deploy for several more years. Supercomputing centers scattered across the country house machines capable of performing quadrillions of calculations per second. These aren't just for scientific research. They're powering the AI development driving everything from autonomous vehicles to the humanoid robots rolling off assembly lines. The computational demands of training advanced AI models are staggering, and China has invested heavily in building the infrastructure to support that race. The Fast Radio Telescope, nestled in a natural depression in Guizhou Province, is the world's largest single-dish radio telescope. Its massive 500-meter aperture can detect radio signals from 13 billion light-years away, essentially listening to the universe's earliest moments. It's also scanning for potential signs of extraterrestrial intelligence, monitoring pulsars, and mapping distant galaxies. The telescope is so sensitive it can theoretically detect a cell phone signal from Jupiter, assuming Jupiter had cell phones. These technological investments aren't separate from the physical infrastructure. They're integrated. Smart sensors monitor bridge stress in real time. AI systems optimize train schedules across the entire high-speed rail network. 5G connectivity allows remote operation of construction equipment in hazardous environments. The digital and physical are increasingly inseparable in China's approach to mega-projects. From trains slicing through apartment buildings to robots walking assembly lines, from bridges touching clouds to networks rewiring how a nation communicates, China has spent the last two decades proving that scale isn't a limitation. It's a strategy. These projects weren't built slowly over generations. Most were completed in timeframes that would be considered impossible anywhere else. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge took nine years from groundbreaking to opening. The Danyang Kunshan Grand Bridge was finished in under four. Shanghai Tower rose from foundation to completion in about eight years. For context, some subway extensions in Western cities take longer than that just to get through planning approvals. But here's what makes all of this more than just an impressive collection of achievements. These aren't endpoints, they're blueprints. The robot factories ramping up production in 2025 are preparing for 2027 targets. The high-speed rail network expanding by thousands of kilometers annually is working toward even more ambitious 2030 goals. 
The renewable energy installations breaking records monthly are part of a carbon neutrality pledge for 2060. Whether you see this as inspiring or concerning probably depends on your perspective. What's undeniable is that while much of the world debates what might be possible, China is busy building it. The question isn't whether they can keep this pace. Based on the last 20 years, the real question is what they'll build next that we currently think is impossible. The city that put a train through a building is just getting started, 